Okay, guys, I think we're ready, uh, ready to start. And I really hope you have your seat belts on because we're taking off. Um, today we have a really, really uh, interesting webinar ahead of us uh, with the topic of fighting electricity theft with GIS Cloud. And we do have uh, a really interesting uh, guest uh, today who will actually do uh, most of our most of the presentation. Uh, but first, let me introduce uh, Antonia. Uh, she's a um, business development consultant here at GIS Cloud as well. Uh, Antonia, hi. Uh, hi, Igor. Hi, Uche. And hi, everybody else who is joining in. Yeah. And as you said, we also have Uche with us, uh, our main guest here. Uh, he's been working with Anugu Electricity Distribution Company uh, with, you know, trying to tackle the, uh, the electricity theft uh, in that region. Hi, Uche. Hi, Igor. Hi, Antonia. And good day, audience. Good day, good day. Okay, so I think we're ready to start. Uh, like I said, uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions as we go. Uh, you have in the panel, you should see the questions tab. So you can, you can ask, uh, ask them and then we will, after the webinar, answer all of them. So thank you for that in advance. Okay, before we start, uh, I wanted to uh, give you an idea about the agenda for today. Uh, first, we'd like to uh, make a small introduction uh, about the Nuga Electricity Distribution Company, uh, who are they, what they do, and then talk about their challenges, uh, the solution to these challenges, what are the benefits of obviously using JS Cloud to tackle these challenges, and also, uh, hopefully the internet connection will be good enough, but we will do a live demo as well, so uh, really, really exciting stuff. Uh, Uche has um, kindly prepared his maps, so we'll hopefully we'll see the results of their uh, efforts in the field. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, we will do a discussion after the webinar. So questions and answers. So please do make sure to answer or to ask any questions as we go. Okay, like I mentioned, our main guest today is Uche, who will be doing most of the talking. So uh, I will actually sh uh, make uh, Uche a presenter. Uche, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. You got perfect. Okay, I will make you a presenter, and then you can share us your screen and do the presentation. And while we wait, okay, for, you Good. can you can introduce yourself and say maybe a thing or two about yourself. Is it coming out better? Yes, we can see the slide, the introduction slide. Good. Okay. So, um, by way of introduction, Enugu Electricity Distribution is um, a distribution company called DISCO in Nigeria uh, that distributes energy across the Southeast geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Um, Enugu DISCO has over 100 employees, and um, the Southeast population is ex estimated to be about 21 million in 2018. And um, <clears throat> this covers five states of Enugu, Imo, Anambra, and Abia states. Ebo states. Then, Enugu Electricity, we have um, main challenges even though these challenges are actually uh, common when it comes to the distribution companies in this part of the world uh, one of them is um, high atc and c losses and that is aggregated technical commercial and collection losses so um we have another challenge which is related to the first one which is a uh, electricity theft and then we have an um, issue of frequent unplanned power outages. So these are the main challenges that um, Enugu Electricity is facing. And to bring numbers to them, um, December last 2015, the uh, Deputy Managing Director estimated that Enugu Disco loses or uh, is losing about 2 billion naira monthly from energy theft. And if you do the calculation, you will see that uh, what it means is that 
since January to date, Enugu Electricity has lost about 18 billion naira, and uh, I'm sure this is uh, mind blowing. So these challenges, we put it this way to be like uh, reduce the ATC and C losses, old and then correct billing database. I would like to explain that um, similar to the unbundling of um, what is called the PSCN in Nigeria, um, the distribution companies for which EDC is part of inherited um, a database that is not updated, that contains a lot of old and incorrect billing information. And this has really affected the operational efficiencies that should come out from the disk. Um, we have quite a lot of outdated information, information that we are having issue captured by NEPA before, uh, after NEPA, the PSCN, before, after PSCN, then we have EEDC. So we have issue of illegal connections from unknown location. And what, these are the challenges that are actually hitting so hard on the disco. So, just a minute. So, in order to attend to these challenges, Enugu Disco decided to get involved in a project that can help us address this. Um, we have project phases that run from creation of base map for the Disco, then we have asset registration, customer enumeration, after which we then have the energy accounting and auditing. Sorry, but are you, my comment out clear? Yes, yes, this is perfect. I, I think uh, this is really, really interesting so far. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, in terms of asset registration, uh, let, me, let me explain the base map a little. Um, in this part of the country, um, we do not have updated um, Google Maps. So it's difficult for us to get the base layer for our land to ensure that we get a, a base map. And this is achieved by acquiring high resolution imagery. And then from the imagery, we are able to extract features of interest of which buildings are part of buildings and routes and points of interest. After extracting all this, uh, we then use it to form uh, a street-based map, which is um, foundational to asset registration. Then we go for asset registration, and what we do here is um, we do data collection of the entire electrical network system. We map the transmission uh, stations, the injection substations, the distribution substations, transformers, the high tensions and low tension poles. So when we map all this and then um, we get them on our updated base map, it becomes um, the basis for customer enumeration. So in customer enumeration, we actually do a house to house visit using uh, GPS enabled um, devices. And then we collect both spatial and non-spatial information. We collect the attributes of um, electricity consumers. And then we then come back to um, get the entire uh, spatial modeling of the whole environment. So, this is uh, what I'm showing is um, some images from our enumeration, which asset registration and customer enumeration, which is actually done using GIS Cloud. GIS Cloud is able to allow us capture um, beyond the attributes, 
and um, the spatial information, we also able to capture images. We can capture image of um, the distribution, uh, the assets, and um, whatever is going on in the field. Then the JS Cloud is also able to allow us to have um, visualization of the entire network. Like I said, when we have the base map, the electrical assets all mapped, and then the customer all mapped, um, we will have the network visualization. It's important to note that um, the asset registration and consumer innovation project, which we are doing, is a compulsory project from the electricity regulator in Nigeria, known as NEC. So this um, project is supposed to be done by all the disciplines that we have in the country. So once we do asset registration, customer innovation, we uh, capture what we call numeric codes, um, which is important in doing codification. The important codes uh, or the numeric codes are what we use to gets what is called a CIN, a customer indexation number. And that customer indexation number is the electrical address of the customer. So I will go straight to what I consider is critical to this presentation, which is um, energy theft mitigation results. And these are our experiences to mitigate energy theft. In the course of enumeration, um, like I said earlier, we capture different categories of um, customers after asset registration. So we have cases where <clears throat> we discover that the uh, consumers that go into energy theft, they have different strategies. I'll try to list some of them and then um, the kind of result we have seen in our projects. One is um, what we call indirect customers. Um, these are customers that uh, using our local balance, they say they are sharing bills. These are customers that do not have a uh, service wire connected to the network. These customers connect rather through their neighbors. So when they connect through the neighbor, they will claim to be sharing bills with those neighbors. And at the end of the day, uh, through our enumeration, we're able to discover that actually they are not sharing bills. They actually hide them from paying their bills. So they are captured as indirect customers, to put it mildly. We have a case of um, 4,120 that, uh, cases that we are recorded in a feeder with 5,185 consumers, so or customers. Uh, and this shows you the percentage we are talking about, the number of um, um, indirect customers was actually competing with the number of direct customers. So that shows um, the magnitude of theft. We have another scenario, which is uh, people that are seen as not connected. We capture them during our mapping as not connected customers. But in actual sense, you find out that what they normally do is um, um, at night, they will go and disconnect their lights and during the day where you are doing the mapping that appear not to be connected. So we have in a feeder, we discovered 230 cases and we are able to um, onboard them and make them customers. Then we have another scenario of people that uh, use duplicate account numbers. What we mean by this is uh, we have consumers that um, they will have um, addresses in different locations. Maybe they have a
an office uh, two kilometers away from their building. So they will use the same bill that they have on the building to uh, present uh, in their office address. So you have duplicate accounts. So using GIS Cloud during our asset uh, registration and customer enumeration, we are able to trace such a uh, customer. We have cases of uh, mismatched customers. Uh, what we mean by mismatched customers, uh, these are customers that, uh, that are on our billing database, they are on a different transformer. But during the enumeration, because the enumeration traces the supply of the customer from the assets, that's the injection substation to the transformer through the pools to the uh, building. So uh, with this, we are able to have a different uh, uh, transformer, but on ground, they are on another transformer. And this is also a case of them because we discovered that uh, sometimes uh, you find out that uh, some internal staff might be tipped to uh, put a uh, preferred customers in lower paying transformers. So this is also another case we record it. We have also the case of illegal connections. And illegal connections are constructed another means. So this is also something else that we are able to um, trace using uh, our project, doing our project using GIS Cloud. We have also cases of double feeding or double sourcing. Double feeding, um, these are cons consumers that will be receiving supply from two different feeders at the same time. So, and they are built for one. So you find out that um, they will be uh, stealing the energy. Uh, for instance, when you have outage in one uh, feeder, they switch to the other feeder, but they get one beam. We also have meter bypass, which is uh, well known. But let me also mention that we saw 19 cases in one feeder during our enumeration in this area. So meter bypass, we have 14 cases recorded, and these are people that uh, bypass their meter and then then connected directly, but they still leave the meter and disguise as if they are receiving supply through the meter. We have meter tampering, which is well known. People that tamper with the meter so that um, you will not be recording the exact consumption that they are using. Then we have tariff mismatch. Tariff mismatch, these are cases where um, a consumer will be on a different uh, classification for payments than uh, what is allowed. That, for instance, you find out a consumer that uh, is um, using his premises for commercial activities and it will be viewed as residential. So these are some of the cases um, we are able to resolve using asset registration and customer enumerations. Uh, let me also mention that uh, when it comes to um, energy theft mitigation. I can categorize the processes into two stages. One is um, important, which is the asset registration and customer information, which in our case, we are leveraging GIS Cloud to implement. So we have also uh, second stages that are actually um, <coughs> important as well, which is actually the next step after the mitigation using asset registration and customer enumeration. So in that case, <coughs> it requires that we must have completed the asset registration and customer enumeration, preferably using GIS Cloud, and then um, removing or exploiting all the low-hanging foods, which is what I initially called the mitigation result. I, I see this as low-hanging foods, which we quickly 
three it. Then we come back to the uh, the next stage where we do code uh, to building level or customers and consumers. We meet our all transformers, and then we use a um, uh, percentage of depth that we have per transformer. And then we are able to also create a customer average consumption and reconsumption and compare the two to get the amount of theft. That's actually what the strategy is all about. <laughs> so um, this is actually uh, the what the steps are. Um, I don't know about the life map now. Yeah, that would be perfect because the numbers that you gave us are, you know, that's what it's all about. These are the results that you're expecting to get because that gives you the return of investment. But yeah, it would be great to see how this looks like on a map as well. So maybe you can show us a couple of your maps. Okay, the low tension lines and the high tension lines. The low tension lines are the black color while the red uh, color is the high tension um, lines. Then we have the customers and they are represented with these dots. Before that, we have the building outlines or the building footprints that we have as part of the base map, which I mentioned earlier. So um, we, we map in such a way that, that um, we um, isolate customers that are connected and not connected because our collection is into different stages. We confirm that we get the connection status. After getting the connection status, uh, we also, which is what we are trying to show here, you can see, like I have a customer here, is connected to a pool here. So <clears throat> we have the customers, and uh, we use different colors to represent their payment status. That, for instance, um, the yellow colors you are seeing here. Uh, these are customers that are without bills. These are people connected to the network where they do not have electricity bills, meaning that they are not paying to the uh, to EEDC and they are not in our billing database. So we also have red color that we use to depict those customers that uh, we do not have access to. So where we categorize them for this and we keep trying to get access to them. Then we have the normal build customers, uh, existing customers with the blue color. So with this, we are able to see or visualize the entire network and what it's like. Um, another part that might interest um, us is when I mentioned what I called indirect customers. I tried to explain it then to be customers that are not connected to the network but they are receiving supply through um, another customer. Uh, I'm actually trying to get um, a typical example on it, of it on this map, but we have many cases like that. Yeah, this, this looks excellent. So I was saying that um, I also mentioned not connected customers. And I was talking about customers that are not connected to the network. Um, as it appears, but in actual sense, they are receiving supply. There's a customer pointing at here. This customer is, there is no service wire connected to this customer. So this is an example of not connected customer. So, um, I have some of them as well. Uh, which I would like to show. Uh, unfortunately, or let me put it this way, um, some of the other categories like tariff mismatch, uh, these are things we find out by combining one or two attributes that we, from the mapping. Then, for instance, I'm trying to open the attribute site. I hope it comes out fast. I think there are some slight connection issues. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, just that uh, uh, I'm okay. I'm patiently waiting for my data to come up. I think uh, the network is um, not too friendly. Okay, but beyond that, um, 
that is um, what I wanted to show. Just hold on. Yeah, so in any case, uh, I'm sure that we can, for those who are interested in seeing this live as well, uh, when you're, you'll be done with the project, uh, hopefully this will yeah. be available to, 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 to them as well. And uh, we, you can always reach out to us, uh, anyone who's attending this webinar, you can always reach out and see uh, firsthand how this looks like. Uh, I'm sure Uche will also like to, to give you a hand and show you how this works, right? Perfect. I'll be happy to do that. Okay, so what I suggest... Okay, so uh, maybe the... during the question time, I can come back to this, okay? Okay. Yeah, we can we can go back to the presentation. I'm listening. Okay. So you can open the, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And as we promised, uh, a 30-minute webinar uh, to wrap things up, uh, can you open the slide with JS Cloud um, applications? Okay. Yeah, perfect. So I just wanted to ask you, so obviously you've been using JS Cloud for uh, not, not just collecting the data, but also for, you know, creating these maps. Just, you know, we just saw the, the, the application that you've used for creating these maps, which is called Map Editor in JS Cloud. So you've been using mobile at the collection map editor, but then you also have a, an option to share, and we also saw that example as well, but you you have an option to share your data through viewers with people who are not, let's say, GIS proficient, let's call them that. So basically, we've built an all-in-one solution um, that can help you get started with the whole project. Uh, one thing that you mentioned uh, on that previous slide is that uh, asset registration and customer enumeration is only one one phase of the whole project but it's also the first phase right once you determine okay these are the challenges that we have yeah. these are the things that we want to tackle um, then you have to start somehow and usually you don't have enough budgets you don't have enough resources energy will to get started so basically as as is with everything the the hardest part is to get started and with gis cloud that part was uh, easier uh, to do, right? If you can add to that. Yeah. Yes, you are, you are 100% um, correct in the sense that um, if you look at the only one suit of um, GIS Cloud, um, you find out that um, he made uh, kickstarting the project very, very easy. Um, it seems everything is ready. That, for instance, um, the uh, the mobile data collection is there for us to collect data. The data is there for us to access the data, uh, and they did. And very importantly, the viewer. Um, let me inform you that um, beyond uh, the stakeholders in PDC who will share the map with uh, through the viewer. Even the regulator um, is also viewing our project using the viewer. So um, the status of the project as updated in the map editor is viewed by the regulator. So that's the way it is packaged to help us to start. And th that's a great value proposition as well, yeah. obviously. So, so understanding that um, it's actually easier to get started than, than you think uh, is really, really important. And the results that you got, uh, so the numbers that you've shown us, these are actually showing you the return of that investment as well. But because of these kind of results, you can also, uh, you know, you get that additional support either from your um you know people who are in charge stakeholders etc so basically because of the successful first phase of the project you are sure that you have enough budgets and that you have enough time to to proceed with the whole project and you know get to the level that you want and that's all because of the uh, 
uh, of that first phase that you did uh, that's still in progress, right? Yes. It's, it's in progress. But let me also, in addition, inform you that um, uh, after reviewing our project on JS Cloud, um, the director uh, submitted EDC and um, stated that um, EDC should be the benchmark for all the VSCOs in the country <laughs> in terms of uh, project implementation, methodology, uh, technology, they should adopt um, EDC's uh, strategy. Yeah, that's perfect. So obviously, you, you also shown the way of how things can be done and what kind of results they can get. Now you, they have someone they can reference to and say, okay, this is also something we want to have as well. That, that's perfect. I think this also brings us to the, to the next slide, the benefits of actually starting the whole project with GIS Cloud. Can you maybe move to that next slide? Yeah. I've moved already. Um, what I will say is, um, um, let me start with uh, being budget friendly. So I will say, uh, looking at JS Cloud and what it's offering, is budget friendly, especially uh, when I look at um, uh, what is available from competition or elsewhere. Um, very importantly, was a critical success factor is um, um, the real-time insight is uh, what we call monitoring. Uh, because the way our project was um, uh, phased or structured, we used to have, or we have external vendors who do data collection for us. So when the vendors are working, is with GIS cloud monitoring, which provides the real-time insight that helps us to understand what is going on in the field. Um, so it, it brought a lot of transparency into the project and it helps us to meet uh, deadlines. Then uh, team collaboration is another very, very critical uh, success factor for us, which we got from, derived from GIS Cloud. Um, team collaboration in terms of um, um, the, the way we structured a vendor could just um, acquire the licenses, JS Cloud MDC licenses, while on our own side, we provide the, uh, the map in the top platform for visualizing and monitoring the project. So kind of, uh, we were able to collaborate, uh, collaborate, and also we are able to share the, uh, the cost and it becomes light for everybody. So maintenance, repair, and quality control, yes, fantastic. Uh, but another thing that uh, was not provided here is um, um, ready support. Um, the support is very, very fantastic. He contributed a lot as well to our sources. Engagement and feedback, I think that is also something else that is very strong. Um, these are all benefits that we got from JS Cloud, of which uh, without this, uh, it would have been difficult for us to record the sources we are discussing now. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's perfect. And obviously, it's great to see that you're really satisfied with your project, ongoing project that um, will definitely, I, uh, I feel, be, like you mentioned, the benchmark for uh, all other discos in the region as well. And that's the idea behind this webinar, you know, to show discos that definitely there is a way of tackling uh, that challenge of electricity theft that it doesn't have to be a task that uh, you know in the end loses you money because you will directly influence uh, 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 the revenue that will that will get from additional customers that you identify as well so basically it's an investment that uh, pays its back uh, it pays itself back so we do have some questions so if we are ready for those, uh, Uche, or you wanted to add something else? Uh, the only thing I will add is um, the fact uh, the pervasiveness is one other benefit we got from JS Cloud. Uh, what I mean is um, um, is a platform, not just a client server stuff, uh, because uh, the pervasive access I mean, our data is, while I am sitting in my bedroom at home, I can use my phone to check project status. 
So uh, that was very, very uh, helpful in our, our project. That's perfect. That's perfect. And that's a really good value proposition. Uh, okay, so I think we do have already a couple of questions, but please feel free to to ask away. Uh, I think you have uh, you see a panel uh, at these you see the panel uh, with questions. So make sure you you type in a question there. Okay, uh, we have another. Um, how do you determine the accuracy of the data submitted most with low voltage customer? Which if you can answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How we determine the accuracy? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. Um, before we started the project, we set up a um, quality target for us, looking at submeter accuracy. So the way we achieve that submeter accuracy is um, we use a GPS device, a GPS enabled device to collect data. So we don't use the, the, it is the device that provides the accuracy data collection. Mm -hmm. So that is how we achieve that. Okay, perfect. We do have another question. How do you number poles with the dual circuit line and also MVLV line as well? Good. We have uh, what we call those. We call it. So. Um, we number composite poles. Um, that's if we have a uh, two poles in one place. So we, we we do left first, then we go to second uh, right. We do uh, uh, left right kind of numbering of the poles, and also we do capture pole before and pole after, because our numbering needs to be sequential. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. I need to note that we're working closely with Uche and trying to get other discos to, to you know, start with the whole project. Uh, we offer not just uh, a solution uh, or software, we offer uh, help. Uh, we help you with onboarding as well. We help you with these kind of additional things that are not maybe related to GIS Cloud. So. You can definitely uh, get in touch with Uche. Uh, of course, get in touch with us. We can connect you with Uche, and he can definitely help you uh, get started, at least, with, with his expertise. Uh, okay, we have some other questions. Um, did you collect data yourself, or did you hire subcontractors? And just for an approximation, how long is your total network, and how many man days you approximately needed to complete asset mapping? That's long. Uh, the first will be, um, we started with subcontractors for data collection, but um, we, we are in charge of the project, not like what goes on in other discos, we are the uh, contractors are in charge of the project. We are responsible for the project management aspect of the project. So um, we set up the system um, and then we subcontract the uh, data collectors. When at the point when we decided to increase the speed of the project, we also have to increase the number of collectors by using also in-house data collectors. And um, we have in excess of um, 70 of them. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's the first part uh, of the question. Did I miss out anything? Yeah, I think how many man days did you did you need to collect all the data? But I assume that you're all you're currently on, in progress. You're still collecting the data, right? Yes, yes, it's ongoing. Yeah, it's ongoing. Okay, okay. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, what influenced your decision to even consider GIS Cloud, and what is the pricing of the product product as against other options like ArcGIS? I can answer that as well, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, like I said, um, there are basic things that uh, attracted us towards GIS Cloud. One is the fact that, um, like I said, we used to have subcontractors and then, um, so with GIS Cloud, we're able to split the cost of uh, license to enable the uh, contractors acquire the uh, data collection licenses while we provide a platform, and the platform comprises of the map editor and the map viewer. So, so that was one. Secondly, and most importantly, is uh, what we call the real-time insight. We call it monitoring in our own terms. 
And what we mean is we needed to monitor the project. We wanted a situation where we can assess the project status using our devices, either our phone, our tablets, our laptops, our desktops, from anywhere that we are. So that was one major driving force for us to consider GIS Cloud, because with GIS Cloud, um, you will understand what is their situation awareness. You will know what is going on with your project at any particular point in time. It was critical success factor, especially when you have subcontractors to do data collection for you. Um, I will leave you God to discuss the, the pricing part of it. So that's my response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I can add to that, basically, you know, we are a, a lot of people consider it as a lightweight uh, solution when it comes to the deployments. But as such, you know, it's really, really easy to, to get on board with and understand, uh, especially for people who are not maybe in GIS, they still understand what they're seeing. And obviously having that kind of environment helps people uh, to start using the application that they feel comfortable with how they use it and then start doing the, their job, right? Especially with mobile data collection application that you put in hands of people in the field, you know, on their smartphones and tablets. Uh, basically, they're confident that they know what they need to do with the application, and that they know that the data that comes into the system will be uh, controlled and uh, in good quality, right? So that's something that I think is crucial, crucial for not just the organization, but for all organizations who use mobile data collection and all other applications that we have. And we do have customers worldwide, so we have a lot of good references. And when it comes to the pricing, uh, definitely we are the most cost-effective solution out there in the market. Uh, but yeah, you can prove me wrong. Okay, we do have another mm -hmm. question. Um, what type of GPS device did you use in in-house to cross-check the accuracy of data? Um, I think, um, well, we use a GPS and a device. Um, I, I think it's better to save the proprietary. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So, so basically, our users, uh, what they do is they can use smartphones and tablets. The accuracy that you get with those devices really depends on the satellite reception you have at your location. In most cases, it's around five meters. But I need to stress, and you maybe notice that we had some minor issues with internet connection. You're currently uh, at your location, so. All our applications can work in offline mode. You can have offline maps as well. And we do have that pinpoint tool uh, that allows you to actually manually place a point on a map uh, according to the base maps that you're looking on your uh, looking at it uh, on your screen and basically define the, the most precise location of your assets as well. So you can actually override the internal GPS device or internal GPS of your device as well. Uh, but I also know that some of our other customers, they do connect uh, with external GPS devices to increase that accuracy. So it really depends on how you want to set it up, but with the minimum costs and with simply your smartphone, uh, with the tap of your finger, you can pull up an offline map on your uh, smartphone and tablets and then place a point on a map. Or you can use the GPS if it's, uh, the accuracy is good enough, good enough for you. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. We have any other question? Let me see. Uh, did you have any situations with any of the subcontractors collecting wrong data, and have you had to do corrections in Map Editor? <coughs> yes, my answer is very, very uh, yes. Um, um, we've had situations where uh, up to forty percent of data collected by the um subcontractors is not accepted by us so we normally do send them to the collection the second time until it gets to the quality that we accept so we have that situation okay okay that's perfect so i need to mention also that map editor um is we call it a true gis but in the cloud so in most cases it gives you 90 or 90 percent or even more uh, it covers 90% or more of your needs that you need to do with GIS. So in addition to you know seeing the maps or seeing the data uh, and visualized on these maps, 
you can also tweak the data, the geometry, the attributes. Uh, we have uh, snapping tool, for example, to maintain the, the topology. So it's actually true GIS, but in the cloud. And the best part is that you can actually test it out. You can see how it works, and you know you can uh, see it with your own eyes before you uh, commit to anything. Okay. Let me see if we have any other questions. So what measures have been put uh, in place to check meter bypass by some consumers? When it comes to meter bypass, um, that is actually a little bit outside our project. Mm -hmm. What we do normally, the scope of our project is limited to identification of meter bypass and the cost of um, enumeration. So um, the is business that um, handles uh, decisions on uh, what happens about somebody that bypasses meter, not really part of the scope of the project. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And we do have another question. Uh, I think it's a perfect one for the last one. So do you have a backup or all your data is saved in the cloud? Uh, maybe I can answer that as well and then maybe which you can add to it. Okay. Uh, but uh, basically, okay. although our name is GIS Cloud, all the data can be stored locally on site with our firewall installed solutions. So we offer that remote installation of servers on site. But if you use uh, our servers, uh, we use Amazon servers located in the East Coast. Uh, basically, we do backups, 24 backups as well, so that there shouldn't be any issues with that. We spend a lot of time uh, working on the security, on, on, on maintaining the data as well. So in some cases, I would even argue that the data in our cloud, uh, in our servers, is even more secure than on someone's servers or locally on site. But we do give you both options. You can go on-premise or you can use our cloud, which is really, really secure and backed up. Maybe which if you want to add something to that. Yeah, in our own uh, situation, uh, we are using a combination of the two. Uh, we have the on-premise and we have the cloud version. So um, it's also a way of backing up our data. We ensure that what we have on-premise is also what we have uh, in the cloud. So um, that is actually what we have. It's perfect, perfect. Okay, th I think we've spent uh, all our time for today. Uh, so Uche, I want to thank you for the great presentation. I think this was perfect. Um, I know we do already have a, a case study uh, that you helped us create. Uh, now we have the webinar as well. So all our attendees can will send you the link to the webinar recording and uh, to the case study, but we can also schedule an appointment, a meeting. Uh, both Uche and I uh, can talk with you and see how we can help you get started because it's a project that generates more revenue. It, it pays itself. So, yeah. Yeah. Uche, if you want to add something. No, yeah. I, I, um, it's a project that pays itself uh, because um, if you look at uh, what regulation says, country um, there is a um, revenue loss um, that um, these goods are allowed by law to um, get from um, uh, illegal consumers of the electricity. So if you look at um, the large percentage of um, people involved in the energy theft, so it gives you an idea the kind of revenue that will be made once there is a system to dictate it like um, we have the asset registration and um, custom enumeration. So it's a project that can pay itself even with a profit. Perfect. I think that's a, that's a good thing to, to end up on. So uh, thank you again, Uche. Thank you for uh, being a great guest for the perfect presentation. Um, all of you, thank you for coming. Uh, hope you'll tune in for future webinars. But in the meantime, we will definitely be in touch with you guys. And let's see what we can do uh, together as well. Uh, thank you again, all. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, the audience. Thank you. Have a great day, all. Bye-bye. I you too. Bye.